Whoops. Oh. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's James. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> so let's get right into it today. Today I thought, mm. because we have you, yes. who's very um skin very skincare. Very into skincare. <laughs> You're so skincare. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. <laughs> way back. I did a video about looking at old um well it was BuzzFeed recreating old makeup. It yes. was crap. Go and take a look. Oh, was it really bad? Yeah, yeah, it was okay. okay. Have you not watched it? I've watched your video. <laughs> anyway, it was so bad, but you guys seem to really like the kind of historical aspect mm. of it. So I thought today, while we have James here, sp specialist in, make in skincare, not makeup, that's me, and me who's a professional makeup artist, let's look at old videos, like old makeup tutorials, because yeah. it's not a new thing. People used to do this, or like we have here in the 1940s. So I thought, and it goes back even further than that, Oh, even further. So. Kings, and, kings and queens mm. used to do it in their own room and everyone would come and watch and it was like a makeup yeah. tutorial. Yeah. Oh, really? Great? Yeah. yeah. It's really cute. I feel like makeup and skincare has come a long way, both in science and like mm. styles as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they're doing Even over the last few years. Yeah. You know? mm. So let's have a look. We're going way back to the 1940s and I found a video that has a little bit of skincare, a little bit of makeup, up, see if anything's changed, mm -hmm. see if anything's outrageous. Yeah, maybe they're using gunpowder. Maybe they're using <laughs> lead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So let's take a little look. Um, dressing gown, not a ghost. I, oh, it looks oh. really horrible. What would you do if it's... I'd cry, I'd cry and move out. <laughs> so let's do it. I'm going to put a video right here for you guys and we're going to discuss as we go through. So let's yeah. take a look. Oh, um, subscribe. Yes. And now. When you face the outside world, be sure you put your best face forward. Mm. Now, occasionally I hear the expression, well, it's the face I was born with and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, that isn't quite true. Any girl can do a lot to get the most out of her look. I agree with that. Like, if you're not happy with something, whether it's makeup, whether it's injectables, mm. or even just changing your hairstyle, I think she's right. You know, a lot of people are like, well, this is me. If you're not happy with the way you look, as, as well as, yeah, change, you can yeah. change it. As well as just appreciating how you look in general yeah. and being happy with how you look. There's, you can always improve if you want to, exactly, you know? Yeah. The basic requirement is a clear, glowing skin. There's no substitute for that. Mm -hmm. And since the skin is nourished by the bloodstream, the things that you eat and the exercise you take have a lot to do with the way you look. And that's very true. I think back then it used to be the whole you are what you eat kind of thing, but there wasn't yeah. really a lot to it. But nowadays gut health is really, really closely linked to the health of your skin in yeah. particular. Oh, yeah. So that's why people are, I think there's a connection to like good bacteria and good skin. Um, but it's just true and glowing skin is, is still a thing that people re really, really like. However, back then I don't think see the makeup they do I don't think it was like glass skin like people do nowadays it wouldn't have been oily no I shiny. think that's a very very new thing mm. so it'll be interesting I think to see by glow it, it was more of a healthy glow actually mm. meant like red cheeks yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 the most important thing I can tell you about the care of your skin from the outside mm. is keep it clean yes for that you need a cleansing cream and soap and water so cleansing cream, yes, I guess it's a, a cleansing balm and you can get like milky cleansers and cleansing creams as well. Mm, mm. Soap, we'll see what she means because soap shouldn't be on your face. I feel, like, and I feel like soap would have been the most basic back then. I feel like back then, yeah, it would have been like Dove soap bar. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people refer to soap back then as well as a generic thing. Um, like vacuum cleaners, people always call Hoovers, you mm, know, it's a brand. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what she means by soap. Yes. Mm. Here's how to do a really thorough job of removing makeup. First, pin your hair well back out of the way. I agree with that. And if you wish, me. cover it with a hand towel. Start to work with a cold cream. Smooth it on thoroughly all over the face, clear up to the hairline and down under the jaw. Give extra attention to the pocket to the base of the nose and the cleft of the chin. I think, so this would be like the first step of a double cleanse, which I think if you yeah. wear makeup, or even if you wear sunscreen every day, I think you can really benefit from. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I guess she hasn't put makeup on her neck, but it's always good to do your neck as well and take care of your neck. Um, but this is good. If this is a first cleanse, I, I would always highly recommend it. Do you think a double cleanse. cleanse would be something they would have done? I mean, I mean if they have no, so. Yeah, I, I think it's like a new thing, but... Mm. Um, I don't know if it's just times and name of the product, but a cleansing cream 
it, to me, is a cleansing balm, like a first Yeah, cleanse. I think it's almost I mean? like a Liz Earl cleanse and polish kind yeah. of situation where you yeah. put it onto dry skin. Yes. Not dry skin, you know, like straight on top of a yeah. makeup and then cleanse, I guess. Yeah. It's like a cleansing oil, but a cream. Yeah. yeah. I hope that's what it is. Just be nice and gentle. Spread the cream on using little spiral motion. Spiral Always motion working still, upward. Yeah. But please, not too rough. No need to pull or push your face around. And that's another really important thing as well as not being rough. Like I find that I, I pat my skincare in because mm. I find that if I rub, I get really red. Some people I like love push that. it into your face and stretch it yeah. up, push upwards, and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I mean any kind of like, massage or rubbing should be done with like an oil or mm. cream mm. to lessen the tug. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's right. It's the gentle massage with the cream that gets results. Now tissue the cream off with long, thorough sweeps. Switch to a clean spot in the tissue after each sweep. Ooh. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing, she's just spent all that time being nice and gentle with her skin, and now she's got a tissue and she's rubbing the shit mm. out of her face. Like even under her eye as well, where yeah. we know it's so delicate now, is that um there's no real point in this. You need to rinse away a first cleanse or a cleansing balm because that's just staying on her sk her skin now. Mm, so the cream's still mm. on her face. There's going to be makeup residue left on her face. She's just wiping away with a tissue, which isn't really... Like modern, modern butt cleansing balms and oils, not oils as much, but cleansing balms, you rub on and then you emulsify with water to mm, really get rid of that and then you rinse it. away. Yeah. And then you go on to your first cleanse and... Um, second cleanse, sorry. So this, first of all, is being too rough. Second of all, you're probably not gonna get rid of all that makeup. Yeah, I have a face mask at home mm. where you leave it on, it's like, just tissue it away. So I'm not tissuing that, no. I'm gonna wash that off my face. Yeah, like a damp cloth maybe, but yeah. also not really at all. But you don't track the grime right back again. At this point, lots of girls like to rinse with more cold cream oh, to make sure they've cleanse, removed basically. every bit of stale makeup. Back in with a tissue. This is a Pons advert. It is a Pons advert. Mm. See, look, what's the point? Don't do that. You know, in several girls' colleges, they have a course in good grooming for which they give regular college credit. And believe it or not, one full period is devoted to teaching girls how to wash their faces. Can you actually believe that? No. I mean, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I would do that. If I could get credit for washing my face, I would love it. Would it. It's, great. it's a sign of the times. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need to go to college to learn that. Yeah, true. I'd like to give you one hint, though. Don't just slide a washcloth around and call your face clean. She's saying don't. Friction is half the battle. And back of your neck and your ears get their share no. of attention. She, oh, wait, is that a don't do this or is that a do I that? think she was saying don't just slide and call. I think she's saying give it a good rigorous rub, which you shouldn't do. There's absolutely no benefit to that whatsoever. This That's is horrible. Why, have, you, have you seen that, that makeup eraser? The, it's the cloth. That, cloth like, that you yeah. rinse and wipe. You have to add some pressure to that. And they're like, it's a microfiber cloth, mm. basically. And like, oh, you, it's gentle. You're, you're like ripping yeah. at your skin, it's terrible. The skin on our face is so delicate. Like you can do that on your body. I do that on my body mm. with like scrubs and like, mm. I will use a walnut scrub or <laughs> scrub on my body, but I, I wouldn't do that on my face no. because the, the skin is a lot thinner. Yeah. And I don't think it takes uh, any kind of professional to know that, you know? Mm. Like she said, you don't need to go to it's college. School, school. <laughs> if an excessively oily skin is your problem, use a liquefying cream as your cleanser. And after removing the cream, Dab on a good astringent or skin freshener. So, so, <laughs> so I love toners, right? Mm. And this would be the toner stage. Mm. Toners are when people think of a toner, they think of uh, clean and clear. They think of like um, oxy and clearasil, where it's full of their detergents, detergents, yeah. astringents, astringents. <laughs> um, detergents. Um, may as well be, mm. um, but full of alcohol. And that's why I think like toners aren't necessary in any routine. They're really not. But I love them because nowadays they can hydrate your skin. They do they're, a lot more. They're, they're not, do a they're lot not more. that second step. It used to be like remove the rest of your makeup. Yeah, remove, remove all your oil yeah. with this toner, um, like this ash astringent. Yeah. Um, no, that is very drying. Very mm. very drying mm. can lead to um a lot of problems down the line, especially with oily skin. In a way, but not not technically. If you're sh stripping oil from your skin, you produce more oil, kind of. Um, your skin kind of like it's not that it panics and creates more, but in a way, it kind of does. It needs to balance itself. It needs out. to balance itself out. So if you're drying out your skin, especially if you're oily, um, it's not a good thing to do because that can lead to more oil 
uh, more breakouts, blackheads, all that kind of stuff, things we're getting rid of. And that's why things like Clean and Clear give you, like we used to use the blackhead one, the purple oh. one, gives you a really instant gratification of like smoother, you know oil-free oh, skin. Yeah, and I always remember, and I think back then, this would have been very heavily alcohol-based, mm. and I remember using that kind of product on my face, and it's stinging my eyes. Yes. But I used yeah, to get yeah. like, oh, I'm so fresh and clean. Yeah, and it's stinging the corner of your nose, mm. and you're like, oh, it's working. Oh, it's, it hurts. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> goodbye <laughs> acne. Yeah. 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 But that's the thing as well, if you do have active acne, and you're using something, or even just spots, and you do have something with so much alcohol in, Mm. it can really dry it out mm. and if you do have oily skin like us it could tend to be that you have a darker skin tone and if you're drying out these spots it means you're going to scar a little mm. bit more as well which is in the long run just takes loads more effort yeah i find that if you do have oily skin the best thing to do is to work with your oils and hydrate your skin mm. and it becomes kind of like um it's not going to stop you from getting oily you're never going to stop being oily if you have oily skin but it stops you um, it balances out your oils and it helps you keep control of your oils. So rather than blotting your face of oil all day throughout the day, you'll find that you'll find to just kind of leave it and maybe blot once a day mm. um, rather than doing something stripping like this. Yeah. If you're off on a date instead of after bed, makeup comes after cleansing. And I mean after. Never apply new makeup without first removing all of the old. Oh my god, do people do that? Yeah, let me just put how do you how did you do that? So, 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 that? <laughs> Let me just say something. I remember one place I used to work in, I won't say where, we had this amazing, amazing waterproof liquid eyeliner. Mm -hmm. And this girl would come in like every Monday morning, have someone apply it, and then she would come back in the following Monday and we'll, No, she yeah, would and we'll take it off from that week before. That's great. I know. And it will still be there, like a little bit crusty. Um, oh. But people do, people build up their makeup on, on top of makeup, and although they're like, oh yeah, but I've removed it with a, first of all, if you remove it with a wipe, you might as well just keep your makeup on. Mm. Um, but people still do that, it's one of the worst things people do ever, it's absolutely disgusting. That is that is horrible. But I'm sure... Uh, with the help of these two young ladies, I'm going to try to give you a few pointers on applying your makeup. The first step is a smooth base. For that, you can use either a makeup pat or vanishing cream. If the pat is used, you blend it on over your entire face using a damp sponge or cotton. Apply it sparingly. And while still moist, blend it to super smoothness with your fingertips. So I don't know if you, if you noticed it, it there, but she didn't. She applied it everywhere but the middle of her face. And usually when you're applying something that's um, coverage, you start in the middle, because we all have redness around our nose, we all mm. have it on our cheeks. That's where our pigmentation tends to be a little bit more. So to use it around the edges of her face, and then she starts blending, so she's actually moving it away from the mm. middle of her face, which is where you need a little bit more coverage. So I personally would have tapped it in these areas here and then gently blended it out yeah. if I was to use my hands. Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, like I know. I don't yeah, know. no, I would. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> there's nothing wrong to me. There's nothing wrong in makeup um, about using your fingers. Mm. Fingers are great for areas where makeup can seem a little bit more textured. Right. So around the eye, around nose. I call them my crusty bits around mm. my nose here, where it grips into dry skin because the heat, your body temperature, warms up product, which yeah. makes it a little bit smoother to use. Yeah. Um. So there's nothing wrong with using your fingers at all. Mm. all what would the texture of this have been though back then? So it depends. The vanishing cream, which is actually what she's using now, mm. would have been if you're familiar with makeup or maybe not, what you would maybe call a um grease paint stick <laughs> which is what we use for stage makeup so it's oh, really so like, so, like face paint yeah almost. this this kind of makeup was literally invented by the makeup artist max factor mm. he he invented the first kind of like in-store makeup so it would have mm. been mimicking what the celebrities would have used so oh, it would have yeah. been on stage and things yeah. like that so it would have been a lot more heavier would have been a lot more oil based mm. apart from powders they did um like uh, powders back then as well which mm. would have been a lot nicer to use i actually think their old powders would have been lovely um but I think they would have been a lot greasier. Right. Um, really oil based. Yeah, because they, they needed, they didn't, they needed that kind of slick, that movement, which yeah. you could only really get from certain oils back then. Yeah. Um, you know, they didn't, they wouldn't have had like silica, for example. Right, yeah, yeah. Things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, I would love to try it though. I think it looks really buttery. Yeah. Mm. If you use rouge, try putting it on with the tri dot system. One dot directly under the pupil of the eye. The second on the cheekbone. And the third, Blush. no lower than the tip of the nose. Now fill in the triangle lightly and blend in carefully until no one... So this is, I think this is what we're talking about, that healthy glow thing. Mm. What she's done is done a triangle here, here, here and here, mm. which is um, 
you call it like youthful where it has that blush whereas yeah, now we do it up on the cheekbones mm. I think that looks really nice I think it looks really natural and actually mimics where you would naturally flush if you yeah. were to, to blush yeah it does look like that with some hair lipstick is your exclamation point use it sparingly but well use two strokes to outline the upper lip and one long stroke for the lower fill in with up and down strokes so that the lipstick goes with the grain of the skin so a lot of people a lot of people don't do that but that's, it's a really really good technique if you have a very like a lip with lots of fine lines mm. or it's very textured say it's really dry and you're, you're not using a primer for some reason to outline it and then go with the direction of the lip is a really good way to get bigger smoother. right if you go um no not really oh. no if you were to use a different <laughs> color maybe yeah um but if it's just one color it's all gonna look the same yeah um but um, yeah, it's a really it's a really good technique for lip texture. People just tend to go backwards and forwards and like mm. oh, but it looks dry. And, and then so rub it together. It yeah. Be sure that your lipstick harmonizes with your rouge and your nail polish. And check with any reds in your costume to see that everything is in key. Now after applying your lipstick, blot off the excess with a it tissue. tissue. <laughs> Last your powder. It goes over your makeup, Sorry. all over your face. Choose the shade carefully. When you find one that blends in with the colour of your skin, no lighter. That doesn't look that's like the colour of your skin. No, so, but again, in terms of powder, I think it would have been limited. It would have been lavender, vanilla, mm. like those kind of colours, white, you know. Right, yeah, um, yeah. They wouldn't have had the range of colours we have now, but yeah. um, they used to have brushes to brush the excess off anyway. Uh, so this is almost just to set. Yeah. And then I feel like, I mean, that's a lot of powder. But you see that's people like powder. baking, which I hate. Um, nowadays anyway if that mm, makes sense so true. this is a kind of a similar thing but i feel like back then mm. the foundation would have needed it yeah. because they would have been more oil based yeah. whereas now we have oil free and you know all these different formulas yeah. that can actually um be more customizable to your skin type yeah. whereas back then i think it would have been you have a cream powder this or that one and then that's yeah all you they have. have to fall somewhere exactly. in between or whatever yeah if your skin is on the sallow side i would have personally done this before yeah because it's not going avoid the too powdered look Use a clean puff or a fresh piece of cotton and keep it well filled. Press it lightly all over your face, starting at the forehead and working down. Use a loosely folded tissue to brush excess powder away, giving particular attention to hairline and brows. Yeah, like massive tissue. But, oh my God. I feel like tissue, well, tissue's invented for that because they always go facial tissues. So it doesn't make me wonder. Maybe not. I don't know, maybe you could fact check. Oh, yes or no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not invented for makeup, mm. but invented as like a face yeah. product rather but than his, like a... The thing is, well, she's wiping everything away. Everything, like her lipstick has been blotted away. Mm. Her blush, she even said it's to not appear not... It's a really natural look. Yeah. I think now doing this, the powders that we have now and the foundations we have now, if we were to then wipe over it with a tissue, you'll get a really horrible mm. textured look because our products are invented to give you a certain texture. I was going to say, what would her face look like in real life? Because you have the oiliness of the vanishing mm. cream and then you have the powderiness of the powder yeah. would she have looked like like what would she <laughs> I think I think we have this kind of like romanticised image of what makeup looked like in the 40s and mm. 50s like it was perfect skin all yeah. this kind of stuff but they would like everyone it would have been a little bit of texture especially if you're kind of moving that product around now yeah. if that makes sense yeah. I mean she set it and she didn't use as much mm. but to me I mean I would see that on my skin mm you would see every single pore. Right, yeah, because yeah, once yeah. you're pushing that powder in it, you, you'll get like pores. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'll get texture. Like her skin looks great there. Yeah, she looks nice. But nowadays we have finishing sprays. Oh yeah. So you could, you could like hydrate that all again. Yeah. And before you leave, take a good look at your face. And remember, lots of people will see you in profile. You know what? I don't mm. think that was the worst. I think no. it's a very the skincare was a very basic cleanse, toner, moisturize. Mm. Mm, however, <laughs> clinic, yeah. However, I do think if you're wearing makeup to that extent, if you're saying that you've got an oily kind of like pasty vanishing cream, um, <laughs> cream. Cr vanishing cream, you should <laughs> take that off. Like I wear sunscreen every day. I don't wear makeup, but I wear sunscreen every day, and I like to double cleanse. I like to take that off so that, that then my next cleanser can do its job properly. Um, so I think if you're doing that, I don't think 
not, I think not using water isn't the best way to go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to take all your makeup off with a cream, with Pond's cream, um, <laughs> and then rinse it all away and yeah. then do a, a I wonder because they, she left it on her skin mm. and then she, and then they use like a moisturizer or whatever, mm. they? Yeah, they use the cream at the end. I wonder if they use that as a kind of a slip for makeup. What does that mean? There's no primer. Oh. Or is that not what the pact was? No, pact is, is a compact. It, it looked like putty. Compact. Oh. Um, but yeah, it was fine. I, I think obviously skincare has come a really, really long way. Um, I don't know if skincare was such a big thing back then. I knew, I know people like have always applied essential oils to their skin, things skin, like that. Skincare but, back then, I think, was important mm. with with ma like makeup. I think it went what with after, after the war. What with yeah. after the war? Um, the water's finished. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But yeah, apart from the toner being very alcohol heavy, you mm. still get them today. Um, astringent, astringents, you still get them around today. So um, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. I just think the the advice of if you're oily, you use an alcohol based thing is a little bit counterproductive. Yeah. But... Counterproductive? Yeah. 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 But not productive. Yeah. I think in terms of makeup, it was fine. I mean, this is, this is a period where everyone's like, idolizes that kind of makeup yeah which is which is it. really nice mm. but i think as you can see from this routine that is very basic so i think when we mimic it now mm. it, we go a little bit over the top if yeah. that makes sense and maybe it wasn't as perfected and as mm. um you know we like to think it's really like yeah. this is a time as well like i know women had been working throughout the war and stuff so they, they had just been allowed to come into their own but there still was a lot of personalization here is there it's a very set standard here's the thing mm. makeup was everything was rationed mm. in, in kind of makeup apart yeah. from um or not apart from but they they really enforced red lipstick on people yeah so even women soldiers wore red lipstick oh, really Vic literally red was the shade mm. and it was rationed and it was a shade that was literally made for the war if that makes sense oh. because it, apparently it kept up morale <laughs> 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 so that's so okay. it was it was really a set look when we think back then because of the mm. red, red lips it's because literally everyone had a red lip yeah it true. was that color yeah um, so i think it was a little bit like there wasn't much experimentation with makeup because it was like you're a child then you're an adult there was no nothing there was in a between. teenager yeah yeah it was a rebellious stage you either look mm. like a kid or you look like your parents yeah so it was a set makeup look if that makes sense yeah. whereas now everything's completely different we're all understanding of our skin a little bit more yeah. So we know we need all these extra products, and then mm. science has come a long way as well. Yeah. Even in makeup, I mean, it wasn't bad. It, it was it was a nice look, wasn't it? And I think I would like very... her to teach me how to wash mm. my face. And yeah, you know, in the back with her blazer on, yeah. her shoulders <laughs> up here. <laughs> And that's that then about okay. that. Thanks again guys for joining us today. If you liked that kind of video, I kind of mix it up and do stuff like this and make up tutorials and stuff like that on my channel. So if that's something you are interested in, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Oh, I'm gonna be on your channel. Gonna be on my channel, so come on over. So I'll be over on James's channel with doing a video there. A little bit more makeup based as well. Yeah, I don't know how to use makeup, but I own a lot. So Robert's gonna show yeah. me how to use it. So if you're a guy or a gal who doesn't know the basics, come on over. Come on over. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.